Alrighty, this is 48 Conclay, and today I have something just a little different here. I'm talking about um, kind of a how-to on how to come up with the muzzle energy on either reloaded ammo or factory ammo that doesn't descriptively post it on the box. Um, here's an example from Buffalo Boar. Uh, this is, I had some 180 grains, 1,350 feet per second. The muzzle energy came up to be about 728 foot-pounds energy. Uh, here's a couple other examples on the box right there. So a little bit of difference in speed, a little bit different in weight, can actually change this muscle energy quite a bit. Um, so, set this aside. Not every manufacturer is like Buffalo Boar and will post uh, this on the box. Most times, oops, sorry. Most times you will get the grain and the velocity, the feet per second. So, if you want to try to figure out how much your muzzle energy is, uh, there's a very simple formula that um, is kind of derived from the from a formula that's used a lot of times in Europe and abroad uh, with you know figuring out the joules and uh, it's just a little bit different. But the U.S. version is definitely probably a lot easier. Maybe not as technical, but it does work for getting these numbers. Uh, so that formula is energy with mass times velocity squared divided by K. Now, K is kind of from um, it it, de <laughs> it derives from the uh, the European uh, metric version um, they take the acceleration due to gravity which is I believe it's 32 32.1739 feet per second squared and they times that by 7,000 grams squared. So that roughly multiplied out comes up with oops, K equals, and there's a little bit of variations I've seen on this, um, but roughly 450,240. You know, depending on how you do your math, this last few digits here can be a little different, but it does not change the muzzle velocity, or sorry, muzzle energy all that much. Um, so, in terms of like the most common way that you'll see it done, let's just go ahead and go velocity times velocity times bullet weight which is mass divided by 450,240 this will equal your foot pounds of muzzle energy so it's pretty simple. Um, the, the like I said, the European metric is a lot more precise. You know, if you're going to try to come up with uh, figures for aerospace and whatnot, um, maybe you'd want to use that. But this is just for a typical reloader and uh, just trying to figure out what your bullets are putting out. Um, it's definitely don't need to get too complicated with it. Uh, so I'm going to just do a quick example here. Um, I did some. 10 millimeter reloads and I was getting around 1250 feet per second uh, you know using a chronograph you can get these figures and it helps you kind of know where you're at with your reloads in terms of what commercially produced ammo has out there so I'm gonna go ahead make this simple and that was a hundred and eighty grain bullet by 
450, 240. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the math off camera real quick on a calculator because you don't really need to see it being. I mean, who? I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's just way easier to go ahead and put these figures in real quick into a calculator and save your time. So you're going to get a big number on that top one, uh, 281 million 250,000. So we're going to go ahead and divide by 450 240 like that. And this gives us a rough estimate of 624.7 for rounding up foot pounds of energy. So, <clears throat> this is a valuable tool to use, uh, especially in reloading game if you do acquire a chronograph, um, because you can kind of see. Uh, so this reload I kind of did um, comparison to uh, Buffalo Board here, 180 grain. They're obviously pushing theirs at quite a well, 100 foot per second faster. So, you know, there's a big difference there. You got about 100 foot per second faster and 100 foot pounds more energy. Um, but this is a fairly warm load considering that most of the 10 mil ammo that's produced is only going about 1,000 feet per second and you know that only puts it around roughly in the mid to high 400s so you know like I said is it'd still be a good round um, but as far as reloaders go this kinda these figures do help you kinda tone in hone in and see what you got um, to be able to push. I mean, I don't want to say push, but with 10 millimeters, there's kind of known to be uh, try to hot rod the guns quite a bit. Uh, I mean, you can you can push these loads, but these figures are going to help you kind of keep it in a safe range. Um, like I probably uh, there's a nice formula or sorry, there's nice charts on a 10 millimeter firearms forum which I can put a link in the comment section down there and they have the whole thing kinda of mapped out and it shows you know what is a light load what is a standard load what's kind of your medium heavy loads and then what is what they call nuclear which is pushing to the max limit where you go much past that you might have some case failure and stuff like that um, so, I mean, there's a lot of different factors that can affect this. Obviously, with speed, um, you know, if you have a longer barrel. So, I use my Glock 40, which has a 6-inch barrel. That's going to have a lot more muzzle energy because you're getting more f speed out of the barrel. So, really, that's kind of where they come with saying that the Glock 40 is more for hunting. Um, and you know, I, you do get faster out of them. It's just an obvious uh, thing that happens. Um, is this a foolproof method to kind of say, "Oh, my bullet's more powerful than you know your bullet," or "My ammo is better than your ammo"? No, there's a lot of different factors. Um, if you want to get real complicated into it, you can bring up the whole sectional density, uh, which is about you know the weight of the bullet and for the smaller size so you're gonna get more of a harder punch not so spread out um, but like I said as far as reloading it's a very valuable tool and uh, like I said it's real easy to figure out here um, the math is easy if you got a chronograph real easy to get these numbers or if you just buy some manufactured ammo uh, I don't think American Eagle puts muzzle energy but you can go ahead and see kind of what you're getting with on the muzzle energy right here um, this does help and it's kind of a nice tool to know how to use and uh, can definitely help you plug in your loads and get them really zeroed in for what you want to do with them so 
All right, if you like videos like this, um, I'd be more than happy to try to make a few more uh, kind of pertaining to some of this math here. Um, am I an expert in the subject? No, but this is pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, like I said, it's not rocket science. It's just taking the formula, plugging in the numbers. Um, these formulas, there's other things you can find out, uh, but... You know, they're all posted online. Like, this one was pretty easy to get online. Uh, it's a well-known formula for using this in America. So, uh, if you're abroad, uh, I could go over that one another time. But, um, like I said, it's quite a bit more complicated. Um, but this is just kind of the layman's terms. This is how you come up with the muzzle energy. So, uh, thanks for watching.